Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. A lot of you have probably seen on other ham radio channels a new antenna that's made it onto the block. This comes from Chameleon Antenna and it's called the F3. Now, the F3 is not one antenna, but what I have here in front of me was loaned to me by Chameleon so I could do a review. There are three antennas lurking in here, and they can all do different things. There are just, this is just your standard thing to hold one of these, but note, there are two of those. Uh, this one here, is six and a half inches for 10 meters through 80 meters. This one right here is seven inches for 10 meters to 40 meters. Okay, and this is your basic tuning unit. There's a variable capacitor in here. There are two ranges you can tune to and you connect the antennas. You can either use a coax antenna. The only thing that's important is the outer part of the shield. Because of the skin effect, it's not going to go down into the shield very much. We're going to use the outer part of the shield. And this is very high quality coax. Let's see, this is ABR Industries. Okay, ABRIND.com, which is one of the high quality coax makers along the same lines as Times Microwave. Okay. You can use these with this with the SO239 or you can use these which are have even less resistance in the skin resistance here uh, with this and they also offer a version that's a little bit easier to tune now with all of them they offer the so-called uh, power compensator this is a reactive element, it's a capacitance, and if you connect this on here, you'll find you can put a lot more power through. Now doing that will completely change your tuning, but that's okay. You can just retune. We're pointing out the different parts that can be used depending on which antenna version you get. Now these instructions are for all three of the antennas. and. There are three types of antennas you can get. They're all different prices. So you can get the standard single flexible loop assembly. That's the basic. You get a single loop right here. So that's a standard single flexible loop assembly. Now, here's something fun that I have not seen in an American antenna before. This has been common in European, but not this. Instead of a single loop, a double loop. So this doesn't make for a bigger loop. Rather, it just loops twice around. With that, you can do lower frequencies, and that works with the basic. Now, you've got a flexible booster loop assembly that you can use with different types of boosters here and the top of the line which is the rigid radiator loop assembly is the F loop 3.0 plus and this instead of using the coax uses and these are just hooked together for shipping uh, you can use these round or, or circular pieces of pipe and they are hollow, they're aluminum, they're pipe, and it's the skin on this. If you look at this and imagine underneath the rubber, there is the outer coax cover, okay, which is serving as the loop. This has much less resistance. Why is that important? I'll tell you. Mag loops are extremely high Q devices. There's a lot of inductance, a lot of capacitance, and some resistance. 
Now, if you lower the resistance, you increase the Q of the device, which means how sharply it tunes. Now, the reason you want one of these things is because the radiation resistance on a mag loop is very, very low. And you don't want the resistance, the ohmic resistance in the material to be higher than that. Otherwise, most of the power is just radiated as heat. That's why the outer part, the skin on this thing, needs to be as big as possible to keep the radiation resistance low. Now, by radiation resistance, I'm talking fractions of an ohm here. Okay, so that's why we use these different uh, elements. Now, this right here is the tuner box. It's used in all three types of the F loop. On the front, there is a switch to switch between frequency ranges. Okay, and there are some studs and things like that for various attachments. This right here is an interesting. Um, innovation from Chameleon. Uh, this right here is a large capacitance, so it's a reactive element, and it comes in here and attaches with this little thing right here, right over this, and you can screw that down tight. And what this does is it performs as though it is a sort of counterpoise for this thing. And I used one of these on their old P-loop, and it really does uh, help allow the system to radiate more energy, to dissipate more energy. This is not designed as a 100 watt system. This is for less than that, about 25 watts. Okay, now all of these little things over here are for a separate thing altogether that has to do with this, which is a little stepper motor. Okay, this can attach to this and allow you to remotely tune it. And in addition, with this device right here, you can actually see the status of the tuning right here so that you can and there's a lot of connections on here and so on so that you don't have to be out in the weather with it otherwise if you're just operating it out in the weather you have to sit next to it tune this with this knob here which is a reduction gear on what's inside and then you've got so you see here in the F loop family going from what you might call an old-fashioned thing to uh, adding some newfangled capabilities. These capabilities are very nice to have in there. And uh, the power compensator, as I said, is unique to uh, Chameleon. What's the bag for? Well, the uh, company, Chameleon, is doing more and more business with the military. And these become tactical antennas. Remember, the military uses HF2. One of the nice things about the uh, loops is that they can be tuned on any HF frequency, not just ham radio frequencies. So the military finds them very useful. So that's an introduction to what we have here. Basically, you can build from these components three different types of antennas. And look at ranges. This is the first American loop that I know of that covers 80 meters. Okay, and that's nice because you can cover all of 80 meters. Now, what is the gain of these things? All of these are unity gain antennas. Okay, all loops are unity gain antennas set up properly and I have already tested this with uh, that was off. So, there we go. I've already tested this with mag loop 
a number of years ago in one of the videos, I got the MFJ mag loop and I compared it to a dipole and found to my surprise that it worked as well as a dipole. So what you have here is a unity gain antenna. It will work as well as a dipole. Now, do you buy it for cost? No, because you can make a dipole for with scrap materials for five or ten dollars. These are very convenient because they can be set up even on a tabletop indoors or outdoors. Okay, um, they reject other stations because they only listen to the one that you want to hear. Uh, so they're convenient. They can be set up outside and tuned from inside. And this is what this gives you. You can go all the way down to 80 meters and so on in a very small package. Now, how is it that this can work in such a small package? Now, there's been some controversy on this subject. I don't know why there should be since it's a physical thing and these loops have been around since the 1920s. So a hundred year old technology. But these things are very small and operate and there are many who think that the fundamental reason is that because the way it's built it more excites the magnetic part of the electromagnetic field than the electrical part. Dipoles excite the electrical part. So um, I'm not going to get into that because I really don't know the answer to that question. I know what I've always been told, but I've also been told by somebody I immensely respect that that's not true. So we'll just leave it at that. But you can make an antenna for a small space. Now I will grant you this is a premium product, okay? So you're not going to get something cheap, but then again, you're not going to get the cheapest that's, that's out there. Uh, do I recommend chameleon antennas? Yes, I do. I have one of their old P-loops, and it works just beautifully every time. It actually fits in a dispatch case. This one's got a little bit bigger duffel bag. The duffel bag has um, hooks, so you can wear it as a backpack. So, very handy little bag. There is a law, a federal law, that if a company sells something to um, the government, it has to be the company's best price. So, the company cannot sell something to the government for a thousand that it sells to hams for five hundred. And they have to sell it to the hams for 500. Chameleon does a lot of military business. So you will find one, the quality is very high because the military people beat the living daylights out of this stuff. They're constantly moving, constantly practicing, constantly setting up separate scenarios, okay? So you're going to get very high quality at a little bit higher price because they're selling this to the military. On the other hand, they can say because they sell so much to the military, it can bring down prices overall. So what we're going to be doing in future videos is setting up each one of these configurations, one per video, doing a little bit of testing to see how effective the thing is. And then we'll cover them all and we'll come back at the end. So there you have it. If you'd like to help support this channel, please go to decastlercom slash support and pick a method that you're comfortable with. Until we next meet, 73.